today's lesson is looking at filtration in the kidney. So we're zooming in on a nephron and looking at how the processes we learn, how they map onto that nephron and where things are happening. So just to enhance the clarification of what's going on for ultrafiltration. So remember our kidneys are there for filtration. The idea is that we're removing urea, we're removing other nitrogenous waste products from the blood excess water, excess salts, hormones, drugs that need to be excreted from the body, it's all happening in the kidney. The kidneys are forming urine, which is your watery solution, which contains all those waste products, which is then excreted from the body. Always bear in mind that the volume of that urine that is created and the concentration of the urine is going to be affected by things like water intake, temperature, and the amount of exercise is being done. Are we losing water from other places in the body, for example, through sweat? So what we're going to do today is we're going to have a look at the kidney. So I just want to do an overall view of the structure of the kidney before we get into the details so that we're all on the same page. So if we start with a very beautiful drawing of the kidney, Then the inside get bit goes a bit scoopy. And then we narrow. Okay, I think we're gonna have an issue here because it's gonna to want to erase everything, right? Let's try this slightly differently. So there's the ureter that comes out, heading off towards the bladder. Here's our scoopy bit. So remember also when you're drawing diagrams for yourself, they don't have to be as beautiful as the ones in the textbook. The idea is to get something that you can understand that's working to help you learn what's going on. But you can be like me. You can call your diagrams beautiful no matter what they look like. Okie dokie, so what do we got? We've got three main regions here. Here on the outside is what they call the cortex. The way I like to remember that is it, it makes basically a C shape around the kidney, C4 cortex. Then we have the medulla. And then we have the renal pelvis. And leaving the kidney towards the bladder is the ureter. So that's where urine then leaves to be stored in the bladder until it is excreted. Other two things to remember, you've got your renal artery going in. We want to deliver the blood to the kidney and coming out, once that blood has been cleaned, we have the renal vein. Okay, so there's your overall structure of the kidney. So when you're doing diagrams like this, yes, they, they do need to include all of the elements. But if your diagram doesn't look as beautiful as the one in the textbook or the one on the course, then it doesn't matter because the diagram is about understanding and it's about having a look at what's going on. So you've got the context and you can see what's, what's where and how they relate to each other. And things like the C for the cortex. To remember, your cortex goes on the outside, the medulla on the inside, and the renal pelvis on the very inside. So what happens is that the blood comes in through this renal artery, passes into arterioles, and then it goes through our nephron. And it's going through a whole complicated series of steps. Okay, so what we're gonna do first is we're gonna run through those steps. Then we're gonna look at a diagram and see how everything maps on. So, if we start by running through the steps. So the first thing is that our blood is in the arterial. So we're entering, my spelling is atrocious, arterial. 
entering the kidney. Okay, we then the blood then passes into a glomerulus, okay, in a renal capsule. This is also known as a Bowman's capsule. You might come across both terminologies. And this blood is at very high pressure. That high, high pressure is what then causes ultrafiltration, which is when the plasma of the blood, the liquid part of the blood, is forced out of the glomerulus into the rena, renal capsule. Okay, so then we have moved into our nephron. What's happening then is we have to say, okay, well, we forced all of the plasma out, but there's some stuff in the plasma we want back. So we have capillaries around the renal tubules. So capillaries surrounding the renal tubules, also known as the loop of Henle. So again, you might come across both terminologies. And these capillaries are responsible for that selective reabsorption. Okay, we're going to reabsorb things, but only those specific things that we want back. So now, after the blood has passed through those capillaries, so it's been cleaned in the renal capsule, then it's selectively absorbed what it wants back. Now it is clean and ready to go. So it passes through a venule, then back into a vein. That renal vein to be specific. Then blood heads back into our circulatory system. The urine heads into the bladder for storage. So this is seven points. And if you're a kind of person who can just parrot learn points, you could just learn this. But it can be easier to understand what's going on by looking at it visually. So that's what our focus is going to be now for the rest of the lesson, is actually building up an annotated diagram to say the same information, but in context with some structures. So wish me luck for my drawing skills this morning. So we shall start at the top. No, not quite at the top. We will start with our capsule. Okay. Then we go down a bit. Then we go down again. Okay. We're drawing on landscape, so it's going to be a little bit different than you'll see often in textbooks. This will be drawn uh, portraits, so there's enough space for it. If we take a nice wiggly line like that, we should now be able to build the rest of it up. And then we shall get to labeling so that everybody knows what each piece of this is. Okay, now we need the arterioles and arteries coming through. Remember, as you draw something like this, it will, it's going to all that study time. So you're getting really to know 
what's going on with your structures. So then you're going to come down and not quite like that. We want to come down and then we want to represent our capillary bed here and then back up again. So we should have done it in pieces so that we could erase it. See, sometimes video pencils have great advantages over digital ones. Okay, so there's that again. Put the other side. And then there's our capillary bed. And up. So maybe what we will also do, actually, let's see if we can get a bit fancy. Let's see if we can change colors of things once we've drawn them. Does not appear that we can. Okay. Well, it was a nice idea for the moment, then. Okay, so then we shall fill in the gaps. And what we're doing is we're representing a whole lot of capillaries down here. Right, so now we've got the whole other lines. Now we need to go back and we need to put some labels in and say what on earth is going on here. So starting out, remember we said the blood comes in. Our first step was the blood is coming in. We have the renal artery into the renal arterioles, remember smaller, into the glomerulus. So one is here. This right here is the arteriole. So the blood is coming in through the arteriole and it goes into that glomerulus. And that is this messy piece right here. Okay, so we can label this. This piece is our glomerulus. So it is the piece where those blood vessels are linked in and twisted up inside our renal capsule, which we've also said is called a Bowman's capsule. Okay, so the blood is going to move through the glomerulus, come out and travel down to our capillary bed. Oops, sorry, we missed the number here. There was number three, ultrafiltration. So now we're going to travel down through that capillary bed. So let's label it here. We have a capillary bed. So we're saying those capillaries are all worked around our loop of Henle, which is also known as the renal tubule. So this big scoopy loop down here, this is our loop of Henle. So what's happening there is that we have, what we said, the fifth thing was selective reabsorption. So that's happening there. The blood then is passing on all the way up. See, we come to the end of the capillary bed and then we're heading up into a venule, which is going to take us to the renal vein. So we've come from the renal artery. into the arterial, through the glomerulus at very, very high pressure, down to the capillary bed, where we have selective reabsorption. Then up to a venule, okay, capillaries merge to form a venule, all the way to the renal vein. When the venules merge, they will then 
create the renal vein. The same time, we've had that ultrafiltration into the renal capsule, that plasma, okay? Waste products plus some things that we want to selectively reabsorb from the loop of Henle. So we're moving down the loop, through the loop of Henry with the selective reabsorption, then back up. And what we happens here is we come into, this is our collecting duct. And here we are heading to the ureter because what we've got now is urine. It's the waste product, that watery solution of waste products. So now we've got those basics of how the blood is moving and then how the urine is being created. So we can add in a few more notes on our diagram to then help us remember exactly what is going on where. So, Glomerulus, remember, we have very high pressure. Okay, three, our ultrafiltration. Is our plasma is forced out because of that very high pressure. Down here in our loop of Henry with our capillary bed, we have selective reabsorption. What are we reabsorbing? We are reabsorbing glucose, water, dependent on the body's needs, and also some salts. Because we've got to main the osmotic potential of the blood. Okay, so then we split, we have our clean blood going to the renal vein, and we have our urine heading towards a collecting duct. Okay, and here we can say we have urine. And that is our excess water and salts. It is our nitrogenous waste products. which is urea and friends. And it is, we said at the beginning, urine can also include hormones and drugs that are being excreted from the body. So you can see it's quite different when you have your information recorded in a list of points versus when you have your information on a diagram. So when you're trying to understand, particularly here, it's, it's two processes that are happening at once. You have the formation of the urine and you have the cleaning of the blood. So just a, a little idea of, of where this is all happening. Your cortex is full of your glomeruli. So that's where these guys are sitting in your kidney and your collecting ducts are all feeding back towards the ureter. So that was then the urine is going to pass to the bladder. So it can be good to summarize processes like this with numbers and you have your steps and you know exactly what happens next. But in terms of getting that really sort of connected and deeper understanding to work on an annotated diagram, can really be helpful because you can start to see how those steps actually link together, where they happen, and how they are working in terms of doing two things all at once. Is everybody happy with ultrafiltration in the kidney, or has anybody got, got any questions? Got a few minutes extra for today. We have questions.
Okay, so the questions come through. Is this an enlarged version of what's inside the cortex? So, so yes, we, we're zooming in. So it, it's a little bit wiggly in terms of exactly what is in the cortex. Because remember, we said the cortex has got these glomeruli in. So these pieces will be in the cortex. And these collecting ducts are all, sorry, I just need to move things so I can see. The collecting ducts are all feeding into the ureta. So it's not completely to scale and it's not completely to organization as well. And you'll see if you um, do a search for different diagrams that different people will draw it in different ways. But this gives us a, a rough overview and a rough representation so that we've got an idea of what's going on. So if we were heading back here, then we would have our renal capsule, something like here, not to anything like scale like this. And then we would have a collecting duct feeding through. But there's going to be a whole lot of capsules because we have a whole lot of glomeruli in this cortex. And all of those tubules, the collecting ducts, sorry, are going to be passing into the ureter. The tubules are all involved in the selective reabsorption, this piece here, the loop of Henry. Any other questions? So it looks like everybody is happy. So I shall leave you with that for the lesson today. But please do make sure that you've got a good understanding of how this all connects together and how all these processes work as one to do the function of cleaning the blood and creating the urine. Because it's quite important that we're happy with how processes are, even when those processes are slightly more complex or a slightly different arrangement to what we study in terms of other topics.